Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel and to today's video all about everything you need to know about the actual quit ratio also known as the acid test. My name is James, I'm an ACCA qualified accountant from the UK and on my channel I help out accounting students around the world pass their examinations and I dedicate all my videos to my lovely subscribers. So as you can see in the middle all the videos on ratios on my channel are dedicated to Anurac so thank you very much and if you've got any requests feel free to leave me a comment uh, along with what you thought of the video. I reply to them all and if you'd like access to all my free videos be sure to subscribe and give this video a massive like and thumbs up. So thank you so much for the support as ever, I really appreciate it. And in today's class, we're gonna be talking about, well, first of all, what actually is liquidity? How does that link into the quit ratio itself? Talking about current assets and liabilities that you need to know your way around when actually calculating the quit ratio because we're gonna be applying some figures in an example. Then from that example, we're gonna take the answers and then actually analyze it as if you were actually doing a question yourself. So if you've got a question sat in front of you, maybe from some of your work that you need to actually do, this is definitely gonna help you out. So make sure you stay to the end of the video because finally we're gonna be actually applying this to real world actual organizations and businesses. This is where you're gonna get the top marks in your exam and it's really gonna add value in your work. So coming on to actually, well, what is liquidity itself? And as you can see on the screen from the actual definition of the ability of an organization itself to generate cash from its operations, to pay its short-term liabilities as they fall due. So this could be from the actual trade payables, its creditors, maybe a bank overdraft on there. So this is cash flow leaving the business. The quick ratio and the current ratio are actually used together. So you, in an exam, you're probably going to be asked to calculate them both. They're actually uh, short-term cash flow indicators on there as to say, well, how are we actually managing our cash flow cycle within the business? Or try to picture it as, well, what cash flow is coming into the business versus what is leaving? This is really key because companies will fail if they can't make their actual short-term obligations to creditors, to the suppliers, that can really hold up the operations depending on the type of business. And another good tip there would be to actually apply in a discursive answer and linking it back to an organization you feel comfortable about. The final key thing to get down in your notes is that when we talk about liquidity, we're actually considering, well, the current assets and how they can be converted into cash. So don't overlook that the most liquid asset of them all is cash, and this can be found in the balance sheet, also known as the statement of financial position. So we touched on there the current assets and the current liabilities, but what are the key aspects that you need to get down in your notes? Or if you were to ever see current, referring to assets or liabilities, this is all within or less than a year. So when we're referring to current assets, these are items such as cash, trade receivables, they're also known as debtors, so customers who owe us money, and inventory that are expected to be used within one year on that. Whereas current liabilities, on the other hand, are a company's short-term obligations that are due to be paid within a year. So this could be for trade payables, also known as creditors, if you want to get that noted down. We also may have some short-term loans that need paying, and also potentially bank overdrafts due to the bank on that. All these elements, the current assets and the current liabilities, can be found in the Statement of Financial Position, also known as the balance sheet, and these are absolutely fundamental to the day-to-day -day running and business operations of any organisation. This is the final key thing on that final bullet point on the screen, that the inventory included is, is actually included, shall I say, to emphasise on it, in the current ratio, which again, if I've done a full video on this, so make sure you go check out that on the channel after this. I'll put a link in it at the bottom. But the key thing here is with the quick ratio, the inventory is deducted within the actual formula, which we'll come on to now, so it'll be crystal clear for you. So as you can see on the screen, that is the formula for the actual quick ratio. We're gonna take the current assets found within the balance sheet, reduce the actual inventory that are found in the current assets and divide it by the current liabilities. And when you put that in on your calculator, it's gonna be expressed as a, you're gonna to come to an answer and that is going to be expressed as a ratio to one. So your answer, whichever question you have in front of you, these are involving your, your current assets, excluding that inventory, 
of whatever pounds worth it may be is it going to be compared to one pounds worth of current liabilities in a company this will be a lot clearer in the next slide when I show you it to an example but it represents the number of times that it can be actually covered on here how many times can we cover our current liabilities a healthy ratio for the quick ratio is a one-to-one -one basis. So in other words, one pound's worth of current assets, excluding our inventory, compared to one pound's worth of current liabilities. And the asset test ratio, also known as the quick ratio, just to reiterate again, deducts inventory. Whereas the current ratio is simply just current assets divided by current liabilities. But let's take it on now to a real world example, pulling out some figures from a balance sheet on here. So there's your formula, as you can see on the screen, along with a balance sheet, where you've got the two 300s on there for the total assets and the total equity and liabilities, which refer to the actual uh, accounting equation, that all the assets in the business are equal to all of the equity and liabilities. So hopefully you can have a go at this as we walk and talk it through. But the key thing on here is to show your workings, write down the formulas within your work, and you should hopefully come to an answer, in this case, of one. So this would be represented and interpreted as a one-to-one -one basis. Or in other words, one pound's worth of current assets without inventory, we've actually excluded that out, for every one pound's worth of current liabilities here. So that actually took us to the ideal ratio of a one-to-one. -one. But you've now got to say to yourself, if you're doing a question yourself at home and you haven't got a one-to-one, -one, what if I've got, say, a higher than one, or one if I got it lower than one, how would I actually explain that, James, to get the marks in my exam? So if I've got a high quick ratio, say for example, four to one, so that's four pounds of current assets excluding inventory for every one pounds worth of current liabilities now, this could be implied that we actually have too much cash tied up in current assets now. So this could actually be relating to unsellable stock, for example. And this is the key thing to get noted down as to say, well, why do we deduct the inventory in the quick ratio? Well, we deduct it because it's saying to you, well, if we've got that inventory sat in our balance sheet, why haven't we sold it already? Has it been sat there idle for a long time? So by deducting it out, it gives us a, a different picture as to the cash flow management currently in the business, because remember, the balance sheet gives us a snapshot at a particular point in time. The flip side of this, as you can see on the screen, is what if we actually have a low quick ratio now? So below 1 to 1, say 0 0.5 to 1. So 50 pence worth of current assets, excluding inventory, for every one pound's worth of current liabilities. And there is a big risk here that we might not actually have, and a good term to get down here of working capital, to pay our short-term liabilities. So we haven't got enough cash flow in the short term to make those obligations, and this could be a real risk leading down the line could be a couple of weeks, could be a couple of months, whatever it may be, a risk of liquidity and liquidation risk on there, and potentially overall if we have to sell assets, potential bankruptcy, and the business won't be able to function. So this is why it's so key that we get the correct balance in the actual quick ratio on here and why we calculate it. But from a real world application now, you've got to remember that not every business operates in the same way. And you've got to consider all the individual factors within the balance sheet and within those current assets and current liabilities when analyzing the question you're doing and in your exam. So I've just got on here three examples of say legal solicitors, for example. So if you're a solicitor, the actual process from when you get paid can be a long time. So you might actually have high trade receivables here and you might have more trade receivables, say, than a food manufacturer. But on the flip side of that, a legal solicitor is gonna have actually little inventory in there. So you've gotta work out the proportions of your current assets, how much is allocated to which area, because as you would expect, a food manufacturer is gonna have loads more um, inventory compared to a solicitor's. There could actually be trade payable agreements in place with a food manufacturer, whereas a legal solicitor may just do it on an ad hoc basis for every quarter or so. And finally, you could also consider seasonality. So summer and winter for a food manufacturer is going to be different for a solicitor. On the other hand to that, another example, but pick ones that you are comfortable to explain, building material suppliers. So they're gonna have high levels of inventory stock that could be sat there for a long time. So that would be a really good example when actually utilizing the quick ratio 
and maybe recommending a type of industry that it would benefit the most. But these types of industries with materials and suppliers and building supplies in particular, they can have a low trade receivables amount because when they turn up to buy the goods, the person who buys it pays them straight away and takes the goods. So it's just to give you a bit of a flavor so that you can apply it to different sectors and no matter which example or business you get given in your exam, you can take the information and then apply these bits of knowledge on here proactively. So that takes us through everything you need to know about the quick ratio. If you have enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a massive like and thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Click one of the videos in here, they're highly recommended and could be the difference that could help you pass your next exam. But as always on that bombshell, I'll see you next time. Cheers.